They thank God for saving their lives and they vowed to follow him from that day on. Jonah saved their lives twice that day. He saved them from the storm. Well, God saved them. Jonah helped. And he saved them from something much worse than that. A life without going home. Meanwhile, Jonah was sinking down into the cold, black waters. <clears throat> but Jonah couldn't get away from God that easily. Even down in the dark, dark, deep sea, God was with him. And so God sent Jonah a fish. Not a fish sandwich for his lunch, but a big fish. And Jonah was the lunch. The fish swallowed Jonah with one big gulp. No. <laughs> Instead of Jonah catching the fish, the fish caught Jonah. God has a very different idea of fishing than we do. <laughs> no, no, no. For three days, Jonah sat in the dark, wet, smelly belly of that fish. He was alive. And because he was alive, Jonah prayed. And this is what he prayed. He said, when I was in trouble, I called to my Lord, and he heard my prayer. Even from the belly of a fish in the deep, dark sea, God could hear my voice. The water swallowed me up. <clears throat> Seaweed wrapped around my legs. And then I remembered my God. I called out to him, and in his holy temple, he heard the sound of my cry. My God saved me, and so I will give him an offering of thanks. I've made my vow, and I will pay it. But our God saves. Then God whispered to the fish, and the fish spit Jonah out. <laughs> that fish was probably really glad to get rid of the old Jonah, making all that noise in his belly. Jonah spent three days in the belly of the fish and stepped out alive again, just like <coughs> Jesus would spend three days in the belly of the earth and step out alive. How great and powerful God is. Then God said to Jonah, Okay, Jonah, get up. Now go to Nineveh. <coughs> this time, Jonah went the right way. Nineveh was an enormous city. Jonah walked from the edge right into the centre of the city. And he shouted out, in 40 days, God is going to destroy this city that you think is so great. <laughs> now, that is not the kind of thing most people want to hear. And Jonah must have thought that no one would pay much attention to him. But Jonah was in for a surprise. The people of Nineveh listened to Jonah. The evil there must have been so bad that everyone knew they couldn't go on like that. They needed someone to show them the way out. And Jonah showed it to them. They could turn to their loving God. And so from the least to the greatest, they got rid of all their evil things. Just like the sailors threw overboard the things that were making them sick when they were in trouble. And they begged God for his forgiveness. When the king heard the news of this, he didn't get angry, as you might have expected. Instead, he tore off his royal robe, and he put on an old robe made of the cheap, scratchy stuff that they made sacks out of. He took off the robe of a king and put on the robe of a beggar to show he understood that God is a real king, and compared to God, he was nothing but a poor 
Then the king made a decree. There would be a fast. Everyone would go hungry. No one was to eat or drink, not even the animals of their herds. Everyone was to put on sackcloth and cover themselves with ashes to show how still <laughs> they must be in the sight of God. Let's call out to God, the king decreed. Let's stop all the evil things we've been doing. Let's stop hurting each other. And maybe God will have mercy on us. Maybe he will forgive us and not destroy our city as we deserve. When God saw that they were really turning from the evil way they were living, and that they weren't just saying it, he had mercy on them. God decided that he would not destroy the city after all. God saved their lives. And that's the story of the, of the man that said, I don't want to, to God. Okay, does Jonah want to take a bow? Give Jonah a clap. Where's Jonah? Come on, give him a clap. There he is. Didn't he do well? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Carl. Uh, okay, everybody. I'm not sure what happened. Are we going to sing again?